Hello, my name is Joanne James and welcome to another tutorial from The Crafty Owl. So today I'm going to show you how to make this rather lovely uh, shaker top box using the uh, Snowflake Wishes stamp set and coordinating so many snowflakes dies and the stitch nested labels dies. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, this was one of the cards that, that um, I'll be featuring in my Snowflake Wishes class and it sort of inspired me to make this coordinating box. So if we look at the box in a little bit more detail, um, it includes this fabulous um, aperture frame um, that we find in the Snowflake Wishes set. So here are all the dies together, uh, various different snowflakes, and then this fabulous aperture. And it occurred to me that this die would fit quite nicely with the stitched nested labels dies. So what I did was I took the largest one of these and if you, if you put them together, you can see the one will fit inside the other, which gave me the idea to create this box because I have previously made a box um, using the stitched nested labels dies. Uh, and so this was just a kind of an extension of that. And um, just to make it super sparkly for Christmas, I also created a shaker top. So in order to make this project, you will need both of those sets of dies and um, the stamp set, which is this one, the Snowflake Wishes stamp set, plus some other things which I'll talk you through as we go. So I've done some of my die cutting. Um, in total, you will need one piece in pool party um, from the nested labels, the largest one. You'll need um, another one in white and another one in acetate, piece of window sheet, and then you'll need a second pool party one. Um, and all you need to do is run one through the big shot like this, um, and then run it through your die cutting machine a second time with this die uh, nested in the middle. And then that will enable you to take out the central section and you'll be left with something that looks like this. So, this will obviously be the top piece. Um, these two, piece will, two pieces will also be used for the lid and this piece is for the base. So we'll put our lid to one side for one moment um, and look at the other pieces that you will need. So you will need two long strips so that look like this. So for your base, you'll need a piece that measures two inches by 11 and one eighth of an inch on the long side. Um, and this piece you'll score on the short side at one and five eighths of an inch. So just sort of put that in your uh, scoring ball trimmer and, and uh, score at one and fifth, five eighths of an inch. And then on the long side, you're going to score at three inches, four and three sixteenths of an inch five and three eighths of an inch, eight and three eighths of an inch, and nine and nine sixteenths of an inch, and then finally at ten and three quarters of an inch. And this piece in total measures two inches by eleven and one eighth of an inch. So those measurements are quite tricky, um, but that's the best set of measurements that I found in order to create your box. So my base, I'm going to leave completely plain. And the reason that I've scored this bottom piece is obviously this is what's going to help us make our box. So I'm going to take some tear and tape. And again, doing this slightly differently to how I would normally make a box, I'm going to run this along the entire length of this edge piece and currently I haven't cut it um, or anything so I'm going to run the whole thing along like so and whereas normally I would notch these I'm actually going to cut them straight because 
it will help you get the perfect shape for your box. So I'm just going to cut them up to the score line. And I did just notch in this end piece, which I also need to add some tear and tape to, because this is the piece that's going to enable us to make our box sides stick together. So I'm just going to take that piece off and folding these lines I'm just going to bring those edges together so that gives us our, in essence our box shape now the reason that I didn't notch these side pieces are because it's quite handy to have the overlap because it helps to hold the shape of our box so the other thing that I also did that I found quite useful is on my base I took the uh, nested label that was a size smaller than the size that I cut so it's actually the next size down and I just positioned it centrally like so and I marked the points with a pencil ever so lightly uh, but it gives me um, an ind you can just see them there and it gives me an indication of where my box base is going to lie so I can make sure that the whole thing is central. So I'm just going to remove this tape in order that I can actually stick the box sides together. I find it easiest if I actually create remove the tape from the long sides first and then just sort of fold them down like that obviously tear and tape is super sticky but at this stage none of it is um, impossible to move so I just like to sort of put it over and use the points on my base as a guide to get the right position and then stick it. I'll do the same at the other end. So just upside down in essence, but just use those points as a little bit of a guide to get that into the right shape. And once you've done that, you can remove the rest of the tape and stick all of the bottom pieces together in the knowledge that your box is um, sort of square or at least true in the sense of fitting the base. Okay, so once you've removed all your tape and you have your uh, box like so, you just need to attach it to the base. Now, you'll be able to see the edge. So if we look at our original, there is an out, there is a kind of an outer edge. It's a um, the sort of the top and the bottom sit proud of the sides so you just need to bear that in mind and again use those pencil dots to just line up the ends and you want this with the die cut the nice side uppermost so almost the reverse is on the bottom because you're going to see the top of the die and if you just ever so lightly put that in place To 
move it around a little bit just to get it in the right place but then when you're happy with it you can stick it down and you know that you're true to your base and that is the bottom of your box complete okay so moving on to the lid the first thing that we're going to create is this shaker portion so on the reverse of the piece that we've die cut with the aperture I've put some double-sided tape and I'm going to remove the backing because we need to uh, adhere our acetate piece to this that's going to form our window so along the long sides I've just cut a piece of tear and tape in half so that it's half the width of a normal length because you don't really want it to, to be showing but at the same time you need it to just hold that um, acetate in place okay so once you've removed your tear and tape just need to glue your pre-cut hexagon to the top like that okay and there you have your your window if you need to you can always go in with your scissors and just trim. I can just see mine is just overhanging there ever so slightly. So I'm just going to trim that down. And that's going to be your top. So the piece that you can see through the window, I actually cut it in extra thick whisper white uh, just so that it would have a little bit more robustness. I'm going to take my balmy blue ink pad and the sentiment may your season sparkle and you can use this as a guide but you just need to be sort of somewhere in the middle so if I just move that a little bit closer to me I'm just going to stamp that like so and you can see when I put my when I put my topper on, I'll be able to see those words through the window. So having just stamped my sentiment, so I'm just going to take that piece and I'm going to add some of the very small snowflake that also comes from the same set. And I'm just going to add some of those around the edge, just to add a little bit more decoration to my label. I'm going to do some in balmy blue and I'm going to clean that off and I'm going to do some in pool party which is the other colour. I'm just randomly stamping them along the edge just to add a bit more detail and colour. I think that's fine and that's all the stamping of that project okay so there's one other thing we need to do before we put this together and that is I decorated the top of my box with some of these snowflakes which were the other snowflakes uh, or two of the other snowflakes that feature in the die set um, I'm just going to take those. I've already uh, die cut them and I'm just going to take some um, frost white uh, shimmer paint, give it a shake, and I'm going to paint them using a dry aqua painter just to give them a nice sheen. 
I'll do that now because I want them to dry before I put them on later. You could also use a sponge dauber for this. OK, so we'll set those aside to dry and we'll go back to the construction of our lid. So in order to create our window, we need to flip over our top piece and we need to take some foam strips. We just need to carefully position them around the edge of the frame, making sure that we don't come into the window itself. Um, and obscure the hole. Um, you will end up covering some of the uh, patterned holes here, but you won't really notice it from the other side. And you should find that if you do see any, you can always add a snowflake to cover. So the other thing that you will notice here is I am shaping my uh, foam strips as I go. So in order to make sure that they properly butt up to each other, and hold in the contents of my shaker. I'm making sure that I mitre them as I go and I'm not being too perfect about it. But just doing everything I can to create a fully enclosed gap. Actually, that didn't make any sense, did it? a fully enclosed sort of container, as it were, for my sequins and bits and pieces. OK, so I've gone all the way around, no gaps, no holes. Um, I am just going to give the inside of that a little bit of a dust with my embossing buddy and go along the edges of that too, just to reduce some of the static. Now you can either put your sequins and things in here or put them on there, do whichever sort of works for you. Um, I'm going to, so I'm going to add some of these snowflake sequins which are just super sparkly. You do have to give them um, a little bit of a squiggle as you go, because some of them are stuck together in clumps. 
to make sure they're all nicely separated. See that those ones there were in a clump. Have a small oops, sprinkling of those. And then also, because we're going all snowy and Christmassy, I'm going to use some dazzling diamonds glitter. I'm just going to tip a little bit of that in too, just a small amount. It's probably a little bit too much. Let's just use my ruler to scoop it back. One of those things glitter isn't it the minute you get it out it just seems to go everywhere okay let's put that away before we make any more mess so I've got my sequins and I've got my glitter and now without disturbing any of that very carefully I'm going to go all the way around making sure I remove all of the backing. Try not to do that too many times making them jump. If you're of a particularly nervous disposition you might find it easier to remove the backing of the tape before you put your insides in. Okay so that's all done. Um, Bear in mind, hold it from the outside to stop your fingers sort of sticking to it as well. That's another top tip. Um, so bear in mind how you want that to appear on yours. So I'm going for that sort of single piece bottom left. And now I'm just going to put this one over the top. And I'm just going to line that up. very carefully and then I'm going to push it down firmly all the way and then when I flip that over I've got my shaker window okay so next thing to do is to create the uh, top part of the box to go with the lid. So exactly the same process here um, as the bottom piece, only for this piece I actually used a piece of uh, Snowflake Wishes paper. Sorry, I've just checked that. That's Snowflake Splendor Designer Series paper it's called. Um, this is scored slightly differently. So in terms of the measurements of the piece of paper, this piece of paper measures two and a quarter inches by 11 and a half inches total. Again, it's scored on the short side um, and this time at one and nine, one and nine, eight, sorry, one and seven eighths of an inch. One and seven eighths of an inch. And then on the long side, it is scored. So here it is scored at, and these are quite tricky measurements. Um, so three and one sixteenth of an inch, four and five sixteenth of an inch, five and nine sixteenth of an inch. And then it gets a little bit easier. Eight and five eighths of an inch nine and seven eighths of an inch and eleven and one eighth of an inch so you do need to really check those measurements along your trimmer and it is slightly easier to use a trimmer than a scoreboard um, to measure that out i think in my experience so once again i'm going to tape along the bottom i'm going to tape along the side and again, I'm just going to cut up in a straight line to the score line, to the crease. 
and I'm not going to worry about actually um, notching those apart from that one there. Okay, having done that, so I'm going to remove this end piece first. And this time, to create my box shape, I'm actually going to wrap it around my box. Now, I know it will fit uh, because I'm going to crease in these along the, along the scores firstly. I'm going to crease along those. So I know it will fit around here. OK, so I can see that it will fit because I've already measured it. So I'm just going to fold that flat to get a nice crease so once again I've got my box shape but this time again to make sure we've got a good fit I'm going to slide that over the box okay and I'm going to fold these down actually before I before I do that I am just going to measure so I'm going to put a tiny dot at one and a half inches on both of these sides. And you can do this now or you can do it later, but I'm just going to take my three quarter circle inch punch and I'm just going to punch out a couple of notches. So it just means that it will make our box slightly easier to get on and off as we as we go so actually that's the back okay and then we're going to follow exactly the same process as we did before we're going to remove the backing from the tape stick these pieces to each other and then place our shaker frame on top So once we've removed all of our tape, we can put our lid on top to complete our box. You might find it useful to turn it upside down just so you can make sure that it's square and when you're comfortable that it's in the right position, you can press down. And there you go. So now we have our opening and closing box. So just a few finishing touches. Those snowflakes that we uh, painted earlier, we're just going to take some glue dots and we'll add those snowflakes to our box.
and this time to pick up the uh, balmy blue um, of the um, both the stamping and the patterned papers I'm going to use my uh, blue adhesive backed gems which just look really really smashing with these so I'm going to take the light blue ones I'm just going to position those in the centre See, they just catch the light a treat and then finally one last thing I'm going to take a length of ribbon so I've got a length of uh, ribbon let's see it's the uh, pool party pool party sheer ribbon um, I'm going to take a length it's about 12 inches long and I'm just going to wrap it around the front of my box I'm going to do a little bit of a cheats bow on this one so I'm just going to take a glue dot on one end of the ribbon and just stick it to the front of my box like so and then I'm going to take another glue dot pop that over the top and then just pull my ribbon around my box nice and evenly and just stick that over the top like so and then I'm just going to so I'm just going to trim that down just get my ribbon scissors it's a little bit of an overlap there so I'll just trim that down and then for the ribbon on my reel I'm just going to do another bow And I'm going to attach that to my ribbon loop with a couple of glue dots. And that finishes off the front of my box. And so there you go. So that is how you make a shaker top box using the hexagon dies along with the so many snowflakes dies and you can see both of my boxes here if you would like more information um, on this project or the card that coordinates with it the full details for the card will be on my blog um, please do check it out um, well, you can find me at blog.thecraftyowl.co.uk. Thanks ever so much for watching. I come back next time for more projects and inspiration using Stamping Up products from The Crafty Owl, independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Bye.